Welcome to Public Health Matters, the show that addresses public health issues that matter the most to the citizens of Harford County. Real issues, real people, and the information you need to know. Hello, I'm Molly Moraz, Public Information Officer for the Harford County Health Department and your host for today's Public Health Matters. It's the show that takes a closer look at the public health issues that matter the most to the citizens of Harford County. As of late, vaccinating for the human papillomavirus, also known as HPV, has raised a lot of questions and concerns. However, it is one of the only vaccines available that prevents cancer. And we're going to explore this topic today to find out more information from our guests. Joining me today is Dr. Dixon King, Chairman of the Department of Pathology for University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health, and Dr. Paul Lamonico, General Pediatrician here in Harford County and Clinical Assistant Professor for University of Maryland Department of Pediatrics. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for being here today. It's good to be here. Good. Um, let's start with basic information, Dr. King, of HPV. Can you give us a little bit of uh, general information and then how people contract this infection? So HPV is human papillomavirus, um, and I guess the main thing I want to get across is this is a virus that can cause cancer. Uh, there's many different types of HPV, over 200 types in all. Um, some of these just cause common skin warts, like people get on their hands and feet. But what we're talking about today uh, are the 40 or so types uh, that can cause uh, other problems, including cancer. Um, some types cause um, um, low-risk diseases, uh, like genital warts. Uh, these are the low-risk viruses, particularly uh, viruses uh, types 6 and 11. Um, the high-risk viruses, uh, 16 and 18, are the ones that can cause cervical cancer. Uh, they can also cause other cancers, uh, including head and neck cancer, especially in men, uh, cancers of the anus, vagina, uh, vulva, um, and that's what we're really interested in is um, these viruses that are usually transmitted by sexual contact and can be prevented by vaccine. Okay. Um, it seems pretty common, one in every, uh, one person every 20 minutes of every day all year long seems to have some sort of cancer related to HPV. HPV is very common. Um, most people that are sexually active will have HPV at some point uh, in their lives. Um, it's estimated that in the U.S. right now about 80 million people are infected with HPV. Uh, most of those, are the, the body clears it automatically uh, over a period of time, uh, but it can uh, persist and cause problems later. Um, so it's a very, very common infection. It's easily transmitted. Um, and um, again, the vaccine is the easiest way to prevent the, vac to prevent the, vac the, um, the virus from continuing on in the person and causing problems later. Okay, Dr. Lamonico, are there any signs or symptoms that we could be aware of? Well, the most common ones, obviously, are the uh, the association of genital warts. Uh, these don't have to be painful. In fact, usually they're not painful. Um, and also ulcerations or lesions around the mouth, lips, the gums. Um, typically, though, many cases you don't see any type of symptoms. Um, in young women, we can also get symptoms of uh, uh, pelvic pain, sometimes disruption of periods, and uh, also bleeding per rectum. That's a common one in young men. Uh, so sudden bleeding that has no explanation can certainly uh, fit into some of the symptoms. But again, I can't stress enough that many of these cases, there are no lesions or symptoms at all. Okay. CDC has an ad campaign running right now just to kind of market their materials towards parents and getting their children vaccinated um, against HPV. What is the link? Can you just talk about the link between HPV and cancer a little bit more in detail? Um, through history, people have always wondered um, what could cause cervical cancer. They were thinking about it even 2,000 years ago. Um, in the 1800s, uh, someone noticed, for example, that nuns rarely got cervical cancer, but no one made this connection um, with sexual activity. Um, and then uh, in the 20th century, um, people started looking at the close association between sexual activity and cervical cancer. Um, 
and various um, uh, various people came up with ideas about different viruses that could possibly cause it. And it was only in the 1980s that a clear association was made between HPV virus and cervical cancer. Um, and then with the, uh, the development of, of DNA probes, uh, DNA analysis, uh, it's now, it can be shown that, that virtually every cervical cancer is caused by HPV. Over 99% are caused by the HPV virus. So uh, in the scientific literature, the, the link is very, very strong, uh, the strongest for any connection between a virus and cancer. And that's why we want to vaccinate, right? Exactly. Um, Dr. LaMonico, can you talk about who should be vaccinated for HPV? I think there people aren't really sure if the male should be vaccinated as well or only females. When the initial vaccines came out, the push was obviously for um, young women to get the vaccine. Um, as it became more and more evident uh, from around 2006 and one that the uh, the HPV virus could be so devastating, there was a main push to get uh, young men vaccinated also. Obviously in the beginning, most, not physicians, but most people felt like, well, this is a girl disease and so they should be the only ones vaccinated. But uh, certainly as we have begun to pick up more information, we realize that uh, this is just as bad a disease in young men as it is in young women. So right now the criteria are um, you can start, actually you can start to get the vaccine as early as nine, but usually we'll say you can start the vaccine series at 11, and we usually try to give the vaccine to the girls up to the age of 25 or 26. In young men it's been approved up to the age of 21. Um, now that is not a hard and fast rule. That's only because that's what the company that makes these vaccines have, have studied. Um, but in fact, there are many, many physicians and certainly GYNs that are starting to use this upwards towards the age of 45. A key thing to remember though is the vaccine's effect, is, effect vaccine only works um, before you get the, the germ. So if you want, to, you want to do a good job, you have to get this before the acquisition of a germ. And what's that, why are you vaccinating some nine-year-olds but waiting for some 11 or 12? Just because of the risk population. Okay. okay. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, the well, risk population? The risk population, certainly in certain areas, uh, and we'll talk about this, the state of Maryland, mm -hmm. certain areas are a much greater risk for, for ac acquiring the disease than other areas. Um, unfortunately, in Harford County, our rates of the disease have gone up, and it's probably be because we haven't been as proactive in giving this vaccine as some, some other areas in the state. Um, so the risk areas, say, for instance, in Baltimore City, where they looked at this as a dramatic epidemic, um, they, they were very good at giving this vaccine. Um, unfortunately, in other areas where the feeling by the general population is this doesn't happen to my children it has been a tougher a tougher push um, but certainly the feeling right now is try to get the children 11 12 vaccinated before they're even exposed to this virus okay molly one thing from a pathological point of view also is that um, if you give the virus if you give the vaccine very early um, these younger children have a better immune response right. Um, so um, if, you, if you can vaccinate 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, and if you don't wait until they're like 19 or 20, well, these early, earlier uh, vaccinations, will, uh, these kids will have a better immune response and will be better protected, it's been shown, uh, against uh, the virus. Right. Okay. Would you vaccinate your children? So I can very easily answer that. I have four children. Uh, at this point, they're all teenagers. Uh, 19, 17, uh, and 13 year old twins. Uh, and yes, they've all been vaccinated and they were all vaccinated as early as they could possibly be vaccinated. So okay. I very strongly believe in this. And you have your hands full. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. LaMonica? I've vaccinated all my children, <clears throat> so they have been vaccinated. Just to, from a personal uh, practice, because I practice this, when this vaccine first came out, um, being the conservative person I am, I was sort of a, well, let's give it a little time. And as more and more information has come out, I have certainly stressed the importance of this vaccine more and more to, uh, to the population. So even my thinking and being very conservative has changed with, with time. 
Dr. Lamonico, are there any other diseases or Dr. King um, besides cancer that are caused by HPV? So as I had alluded to earlier, uh, you can get uh, genital warts. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggie. Um, and that uh, they aren't all genital warts or cancer producing, although it is certainly a concern. Um, the common skin warts, be mm -hmm. it on the hands or fingers, or the plantar wart, many of those are HPV related. Realize that it's not the HPV that causes the, that's not usually the cancer causing genital uh, diseases. Uh, okay. But those would be the big, th big ones that we would see. Okay. Um, are you seeing any trends in regards to HPV? Certainly in my practice, and I think what the community has experienced, um, back in the, uh, the 90s or so when I had first started, um, cervical cancer in young women prior to that was considered, that was, we didn't see it a whole lot. And then as things sort of progressed, we started to see a dramatic climb in cervical cancers and cancers um, related to that. And when the vaccine came out, you started actually to see a decline. Um, unfortunately, in Harford County, that hasn't followed suit like we would see nationwide. And some of this is the resistance or the feeling of the HPV vaccine is only if my child's sexually active. Um, so my hope would be that uh, the trend would continue, that more and more people would be accepting of the vaccine and uh, want to move forward getting their children vaccinated. And it doesn't really hit any specific demographic. It's, it's really any it's, one of... It's across the board. There is no racial disparity, uh, nothing, it's across the board. Okay. One of the trends that I wanted to mention was um, an increase in head and neck cancers mm -hmm. uh, in young men especially. Um, back um, in the mid 20th century, say, most head and neck cancers uh, were caused by people that abused alcohol uh, and tobacco. Um, and with uh, a decrease in tobacco consumption, uh, that actually started to decrease. Uh, but then what you saw was uh, head and neck cancers that were caused by HPV. Um, and that uh, trend started in about the uh, 70s, increased in the 80s, and is continuing to increase. So um, as far as, uh, as vaccinating young men, people say, well, why do I need to get uh, my son vaccinated? Uh, about 70% now of head and neck cancers, this is uh, cancers of the tonsil, uh, the back of the throat, uh, the base of the tongue, uh, again, about 70% of those are caused by human papillomavirus. So this is uh, yet another way of preventing cancer, uh, and this is in young men, uh, by getting the vaccine. So that, that trend, uh, unfortunately, has been uh, on an upswing, and that's another cancer that we uh, can hopefully prevent with this vaccine. Okay. So we, there's some data that suggests that most parents are having their children vaccinated. Um, there's a graphic to go with that. About six out of 10 parents are uh, vaccinating their children, but still not all parents. Um, what would you say to those parents who are against vaccinating their child? And how would you educate them and encourage them to vaccinate their children? That can go for both of you. Okay, so from, from a clinical point of view, when I deal with parents, when the vaccine came out, it was more of a, this is a, virus that is caused by sexual transmission. It helps prevent STDs. And so that stigma came along with the, with the vaccine. Unfortunately, especially in this county, the feeling was my child will never have sex. And I guess as a parent, you would hope your child never has sex until the age of 40, I guess. Um, <laughs> but to be realistic, um, unfortunately, this is what we deal with. Um, as more and more evidence has grown that this is really a prevention of cancer, I think more people have gone on board that this is something that we can make a difference in. Uh, I think the other issue has been with any vaccine, how dangerous it is. Does this come with bad side effects? And to tell you the truth, I really have not seen anything, and we've been given this vaccine out for quite some time now. I've not really seen anything other than 
you get a shot and it hurts a little bit, um, that would cause me to worry about side effects. And I think that's across the, uh, the nation, really no significant side effects. I can't stress enough, this is a dead vaccine. You're not giving a live virus. You're not giving them the issue. You're allowing your body to build up an immune system to prevent the acquisition of the, of the, types, of can of the types of HPV. Let, let me just add to that, that um, one country that was really ahead of the game here was Australia. Um, when the vaccine uh, came out, uh, Australia saw it as a public health issue. Uh, they didn't look at it as um, preventing um, sexually transmitted disease so much as preventing cancer. And so uh, they started very early uh, to make it a, a national priority to get uh, the young people vaccinated. Uh, and the latest data I saw was upwards of 75 to 80 uh, percent of their young people have been vaccinated now. So they were uh, ahead of the game, and I think we're going to see as time goes on um, that it will uh, it'll be borne out in a decrease in not just cervical cancer, but these other cancers that we've talked about. I agree. Yeah. Almost like, would it just be like a routine vaccination that you would just go into the doctors for and vaccinate your children without well, really any discussion? Yes, Molly. That's what we're trying yes. to, to get it at. Um, of course, all parents want, want to know what kind of vaccines their children are getting. Right. And there will always be families that do not want to get any vaccines. Right. But we would hope to get it to the point that it would become a routine vaccine. Right. And what if you have parents that understand this, but then, um, you know, they try and explain that, you know, my son or daughter isn't sexually active yet, they use a condom, or they're in some sort of committed relationship, that they don't really need it because they're just, you know, what you had touched upon is, it's not going to happen to me or my child. Again, the issue here is, uh, is this is a prevention of a type of cancer and you don't know always what your children are doing, number one, but number two, why even take the chance? And I can just add to that, that, um, that yes, condoms used consistently uh, and correctly can help prevent this vaccine from being, this uh, virus from being transmitted, um, but uh, a condom doesn't cover all of the, uh, the uh, sexual area that can be infected by human papillomavirus, and so genital warts often cannot be prevented. Uh, by using a condom. Um, and in terms of being in a uh, committed relationship, um, uh, again, it takes uh, exposure to one person. So if either person has had even one exposure at any point to another person sexually, um, then they could also uh, get, the, get the virus. So. Okay. Why has this been a recent, I mean, I feel like when I was probably in college, you really, this was like 10 years ago, heard about um, HPV and the dangers of, of contracting HPV. How come this wasn't something that was really an issue years and years ago? Well, I guess the vaccine came out in what about, uh, it's been about 10 or 12 yeah, years now. 2006 since the vaccine. is when the vaccine originally came out. And when it first came out, it was primarily for the, the genital wart the strains. Mm -hmm. So, that, like I had said, it, it was a tougher sell then mm -hmm. because what are we doing? We're preventing genital warts. And yes, there was certainly this feeling like you're trying to go after the cancer causing strains 16 and 18, but the, the vaccines that were out, it was sort of advertised as we're going to go after genital warts. That probably was not a very good beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as the uh, public has become more aware that this is this HPV virus has been um, very, very well associated with cancers, it's going to start to pick up. So 10 years ago, it was, uh, it was an STD vaccine. That's what it was. And uh, unfortunately, it was not pushed that much. Most offices says, said, I, yeah, I have it, but you know, this might be a good idea to get, but it really wasn't the kind of thing that was, was really said, oh, you have to get it. Molly, you mentioned college, and I, uh, I saw a statistic about college the other day. Um, if you go off to a four-year college uh, in the United States, uh, you have about an 85% chance of graduating within four years. Um, if you go off to college and in that four-year period you have sexual intercourse 
with just four different people, you have a chance of 85%, 85% chance of graduating with HPV infection. That's how common it is. Hmm. Only four people, four years of college, 85% chance of getting HPV. Wow, that's pretty extreme. Are you seeing, uh, you know, a lot of outreach in the community or um, education done in doctor's offices or the hospital or in your private practice really educating parents on HPV? So certainly uh, Harford County uh, over the past year has set up a task force of, uh, of which Ms. Bands is, uh, is uh, a part of that. And uh, their idea is to sort of get the county more realistic in their approach to um, what, how we deal with the vaccine and giving the vaccine. Um, in the beginning of uh, the school year, we actually had talked to many of the school nurses and the teachers about the importance of the vaccine and uh, trying to encourage more families to proceed with that. And what I would like to see is that the physicians' offices, and this would mainly be the GYNs and the pediatricians, play a more active role in advertising that this vaccine is safe. It is something that should be considered um, one of the important medical issues of our time, or at least right now, and that there would be more of a push to give this and complete the series in the county. I think the county is looking to try to get its rates for vaccination substantially up over the next year. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that um, um, one of the things that I have seen uh, is, uh, for example, in Baltimore City on bus stops, um, posters about here is the HPV vaccine, this can prevent cancer, and I have not seen it in Harford County. And I'm wondering if, again, like you were saying, uh, Dr. Monaco, that the Baltimore City was a little ahead of the game here, and they've done more to push this, and Harford County may be able to do more. Yes, my hope would be that we start to see much more information in the county, um, hopefully posters in doctor's offices, um, uh, posters around the community, and, and see it as a cancer-preventing mm -hmm. vaccine, um, because that's really what we're talking about here. Right. And that's why I like the CDC, um, their posters that they have, and they're pushing for their marketing materials because it focuses on preventing cancer and not necessarily an STD or any disease associated with that. So um, they have great resources there. One of the posters that I've seen, uh, there's actually quite a sad poster, but it, it, it drives home the point of, of this is a vaccine you can give your kids uh, to prevent cancer. And it's a, it's a young woman uh, who is in her 30s and um, she's developed cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and she's asking her parents and she's asking her pediatrician and the nurses that took care of her when she was a child, you know, there was a vaccine that I could have had to prevent cancer. Uh, why didn't I get this vaccine? Uh, and it's, uh, again, it's a sad poster, but it drives home the point that this is a vaccine that prevents cancer and uh, we really need to think about what we're doing here, how we can keep our kids from getting this terrible disease uh, and we have to do it during that time frame uh, between nine years old and about uh, what, 21 years old, mm -hmm. well, 23. Or, yeah, 25 yeah. for women, right. Yeah. So don't let that time pass. Right. Right. It is sad because, you know, I'm hearing so many more cases of cervical cancer. You see on the news and social media and things like that, just women, young women in their 30s being diagnosed with cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it's really it's really sad to think about. You think about cancer as being maybe older, associated mm -hmm. with an older age. But you, you mentioned social media, and can mm -hmm. I bring that up? That um, in the social media, uh, there have been uh, various claims about the vaccine, right. uh, about uh, terrible things that that it can, can happen to people that have the vaccine, and um, none of this has been proved scientifically. And the the CDC and the FDA look into all of these claims very, very carefully. They want to make sure this is a safe vaccine. Right. Um, and I know you have to respond to parents many times in your practice that have seen these things on social media, um, and you have to respond to them. I mean, all we can do as a, uh, as a clinician is sort of say, this is what we see, this is what we don't see. And uh, unfortunately, social media and the internet is all with us, mm -hmm. and anybody can put anything they want out there, and of course, accusations get flown all over the place. Right. All we can do is, is provide 
the facts that we see. Right. And basically the safety of the vaccine has been very, very good. And certainly it has been shown to be efficacious in controlling the certain types of cancers. What do you, is there a specific, like the worst lie out there that's really misleading people or it's just like it varies? I, I've seen uh, a couple of claims uh, uh, about uh, causing sterility in women, oh. um, ovarian failure, um, and um, causing various uh, disorders, everything from Guillain-Barre uh, uh, to, other, to other diseases that, again, anytime anyone makes this claim, the CDC and the FDA looks into it very carefully and right. nothing has ever been proved. And it's not true. Yes. Yes, I would have to agree. We heard, had the sterility one that's come up. Uh -huh. um, also, there had been a few parents that said, well, we could get the HPV from the vaccine, which is absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, and uh, also, it causes pelvic pain and disruption of periods, of which, again, nothing has ever panned out with any of that. Okay. So we have about a minute and a half left. In that time, if you had one word or words of advice uh, to parents or children contemplating getting vaccinated, what would you say? Well, I asked Molly if get it was one word, yes. and I think it might be one. So absolutely, we'll hyphenate it. <laughs> take, make sure that, that you give your child the vaccine. You're preventing your child, hopefully, from getting this kind of cancer. And for me, cancer preventing vaccine. So certainly consider it and go forward with it. And repeat it again. Cancer, Cancer preventing, preventing vaccine. vaccine. Absolutely. Should we all say it together? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for being on today's show. I think Good this was here. really educational and hopefully brings light and a little bit more um, awareness to HPV. And we look forward to Harford County initiatives with HPV. Um, so that is all we have time for today. I would like to thank my guests on today's show, Dr. King and Dr. LaMonaco. If you would like more information on HPV, please refer to the resource page after this program and join us next time for another important health issue that matters most to the citizens of Hartford County. Thank you for watching. You've been watching Public Health Matters, brought to you as a public service by Harford Cable Network, your county connection.